Stellaris combat is hard. Some solutions are so counterintuitive that it's almost baffling. So here's 25 Stellaris combat tips every player must know. 1. When you're fighting disruptors, the best way to counter them is to empty all the slots? Wait, wait, wait. I am not joking. This is a viable strategy as disruptors only hit the hull. Any extra alloys used for shields and armor are just wasted and can be used for more ships instead. 2. Please, for the love of God, turn off the auto designer. Keep this on and you legitimately cannot design your own ships. Please, please turn this off. 3. Do not mix weapons that have different attributes. Conventional kinetics with conventional energy weapons. Missiles with either torpedoes or strike crafts. And full bypass weapons only with other full bypass weapons. As long as you keep these in mind, you won't be seeing this absolutely cursed ship design. Containing lasers, missiles, and even disruptors in one horrid combo. When in battle, all the damage is distributed evenly on the shields, armor, and hull. Practically doing nothing in the actual engagement. 4. Never trust star bases. Even if you build them up to appear formidable, they're likely to be crushed by, in worst cases, half of the shown fleet power on the station. Because guess what? The starbase has literally zero evasion. 5. It doesn't help that you can't design your starbases either. Imagine a starbase on a pulsar only having kinetic weapons. Like, this is actually hilarious. 6. You can set a retreat point. Alright, but what the heck does it do? If you don't set this up manually, after you retreat from a battle, your ships will literally scatter everywhere. Possibly even in front of the enemy fleet as they advance, which is obviously pretty bad. Just remember to periodically select all your ships and set a retreat point by right-clicking a starbase. 7. Don't rush space extractors. No, not starbases. I meant the these things. Mining stations are one thing, but research stations are just horrible. Police never built them. Or worse, researching the techs, boosting them. Wait, wait, I know this is a combat tips video, but hear me out. If you're next to an ultra angry empire and you know there's an attack inbound, you simply don't have the luxury to spend on things that won't help you survive right then and there. Think about it. What's more useful? A couple of extra minerals per month or converting those minerals into alloys so you don't die. I think the answer is obvious here. 8. If you're really stubborn and still want to build space extractors, please, please first focus on only extracting minerals. Keep in mind that there is an energy upkeep on all mining stations, but in the early game, you need minerals much more than energy. So I would not recommend building on energy and research deposits until later on, as there isn't enough minerals for both building up your planets and extracting. And in the case of you wanting to counterattack, not enough minerals for ground armies. 9. No pops? Nihilistic acquisition got you covered. The Ascension perk gives a special bombardment stance, allowing you to drain pops from planets like a vacuum cleaner. But unfortunately, the stance doesn't take in the last few pops, so don't expect it to completely decolonize worlds. Of course, this bombardment stance is called raiding. Let's play Great Raid Shadow, Shadow Legends. Legends. Start now for free. Yes. 800 unique champions are looking mighty fine. You'll be playing as these heroes, fighting monsters until you meet the dungeon bosses that go from easy to hellish nightmare levels of hard. It doesn't matter if you're a filthy casual or a giga tryhard because there's always something for everyone. One of the toughest bosses being the Hydra. Five different heads all being bosses at the same time. One of them being the head of torment, making you skip your turns and lose access to your skills and the the only way to stop it is to hide. This is the same for the other heads, as each has some ridiculous ability that forces you to experiment with the huge roster of champions to progress. So scan the QR code on screen or click the link down below to fight the Hydra today and get the epic champion Knight Errant only available by my link, along with extra resources to help you in the perilous journeys ahead. I know, sounds insane. And on top of that, it's free. After you do that, copy your in-game player ID and then venture 
over to RateyardClarium.com from October 15th to November 10th. Grab a shuffle, pick a grave, and start digging. As you'll be in with the chance to dig up some amazing in-game items and even real-life prizes. Ranging from epic and legendary Halloween-themed raid champions to Amazon gift cards with a total value of $20,000. Existing raid players can also find a special promo code on RaidyardClarium.com. See you on the battlefield. 10. Rush Cloaking Put them inside of potentially dangerous empires and pay attention! This allows you to get an early warning just in case they were to have some funny ideas. And in war, you're able to see the entire battlefield without having to deal with the fog of war. But wait, do not use them on your military ships. Instead, just build a bunch of science ships as they come with cloaking without any of the strategic resource costs. In essence, they're just cheap, disposable, scouts if you have enough intel you can even see where they don't have any detection 11 if you really want to use cloaking just know that when a fleet is cloaked you can reinforce behind enemy lines because your reinforcements are also cloaked 12 keep in mind that when you are detected by the empire that owns the system your fleet is in if they are not allied in a joint war or federation you will be knocked out of cloaking forcing them to have to recharge their cloak fields and recloak somewhere else but if you're outside of the systems the empire that detected you owns your fleet will still remain cloaked and can simply move away from the sensor station to get undetected again 13 if a massive death stack is about to engage your fleet you would think that it's jover right well no if you have jump drives you can order your entire fleet to jump before the battle starts and everything will just jump anyway even ignore Ignoring the battle that was started right then and there. This is insanely useful in a guerrilla war, where you just jump drive everywhere sniping as many worlds as possible, giving the enemy a very small time to react. Now, what if the enemy were to also have jump drives? They can just jump towards you and you're dead. Even worse is that if they specifically right click your ships, they will straight up follow your jump order. Yes, you heard that right. Right clicking an enemy fleet makes you follow them even their unknown jump target but this is not the case if you have extra jump range with either psionic jump drives or eager explorers as you can jump farther than normal it won't allow the enemy to follow and so you get off scot-free 14 do not build too many corvettes they are extremely inflexible and as such terrible later into the game only build them when there is literally no other choice because otherwise you will be stuck with terrible disengagement, inflexible ship slots, and just low base health in general. 15. Separate your fleets by ship types. Why? Because combining them makes the combat computer extremely scuffed. For example, if you combine a long-range artillery ship with a close-range PD ship, both ships' combat computers will interfere with each other. This is because the artillery combat computer will try to not be too far away from the rest of the fleet, which can be an issue when the rest of the fleet is literally headfirst into the enemy. 16. Right click on a ship class on a fleet and it will automatically dislodge that ship class from the fleet. Heck, this works for any of your leaders. If you're really desperate, you can even forcefully take out an admiral or general that's stuck in battle by just selecting another fleet or army that's not in battle and selecting them as a leader there, saving them from certain death. 17. G merges a fleet together and V splits a fleet in half. After you do this, there will be extra fleet capacity on each fleet that allows you to click and drag the ship boxes to one another. Very useful if you want to reorganize a fleet in a less clunky manner. Because as you've already guessed, the transfer menu is pain. 18. Fortresses in general work better in planets with a lot of worker jobs, aka mining, energy, and food worlds. You know, conscripting low-class people has always been effective. And it's no different here, because by prioritizing soldier jobs, the other workers in these planets can replace the dead soldiers from prolonged orbital bombardment and ground battles. Soldiers will die, and if not immediately replaced, their corresponding defense armies 
this will quite literally evaporate into thin air. 19. Please don't put your fourth world next to the border. I swear to god, the amount of times I see this happening can be counted on multiple hands, and each time I die a little inside. Please don't do it. Let's also not forget that even if you garrison it with soldier jobs, there would be no replacements, so it's likely that the world will fall extremely quickly. 20. Pick the naval cap tax. They are honestly so useful in fielding a fleet early on. Later, you can always rely on trusty anchorage spam, but in the early game, that's not much of an option, considering limited space, limited alloys, and most of all, limited starbase cap. Oh yeah, anchorages are good. Please build them. I'm gonna be real with you. Every other module just suck. Trade hubs? Useless. Defense batteries? Useless. Solar panels? Slightly useful for the early game but falls off later. Detection arrays? Are important too though. Okay, okay. It's not all bad. But you get the point. Anchorages are good. Got it? 21. Why is armor meta now? Because now that neutrons are nerfed, most of the horrifying weapons are the shield busters. Or in the case of torpedoes, swarmers, and carriers, just ignore shields completely. Sure, you can go and use some hardening modules, but that would in turn reduce your speed, which is very important in combat. Let's also not forget how each armor module give more compared to shields, while not costing any reactor power. Some weapons are just power guns and to both have them and shields is just straight up impossible. 22. At some point, naval cap contributions on federations are not worth it, as each level of contribution only adds 200 total naval cap to the federation fleet. Once you run down the numbers, it's actually pretty awful once you start contributing more than you actually get. This is not even mentioning the fact that you won't always be in control of the federation fleet. In summary, a great early game tool as fed fleets don't have upkeep but later on pretty awful as you're basically just wasting naval cap 23 having trouble with ultra angry empires well tough luck they may get even harder because they have an increased chance of becoming crisis aspirants fleets that cost nothing to build an upkeep while having some insane damage bonuses against everything so what do you do well just be the defender of the galaxy it gives bonus damage to all crisis factions and that also includes the crisis aspirants 24 press take point on a fleet to encourage allied empires to follow your fleet they won't always follow you but sometimes they do which is definitely better than never that's for sure 25 you can go one step further and abuse fleet follow mechanics by sitting on the hyperlane, right clicking your fleet that are in take point to the enemy system and then immediately pressing H or right clicking back to the system to cancel the order and let the following fleet warp in first with a few days delay and then right clicking again to send your fleet for real this time preserving your own and sacrificing the others as the enemy will see and lock to the allied fleets first kinda scummy but hey if it works it works now a massive thanks to Great Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to download the game down below for free. But you know what else is free? Liking and subscribe yet again. Strat devolving into generic YouTuber asking for likes and subs. Yeah 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 I know. Also a massive thanks to Alaya West and everyone else on Patreon. An upload schedule on list Strat channel? Is it real or fake? Comment down below for the algorithm. Alright goodbye.